Everybody, it's great to be back again here on tomorrow. It's Friday, Pashat Shmini. It's also Pashat Chodesh. We'll also be blessing Shabbat Mevachim for the new moon. So we have a lot of things happening. And um, I saw a lecture about a, of a great general in Israel, famous general Yitzchak Brick, who actually saw what was happening, what was, what was going to take place on October 7th. He saw he had a lot of foreshadowing of the events. He saw a weakness in the Israeli army. They were relying too much on their technology and not enough on, you know, on building the army strong, on the, on the boots on the ground and the old-fashioned style, which really has proved itself. But anyway, um, after hearing his lecture, it was about an hour I, I sat through that, listening to it. Um, it was a YouTube video. And it bothered me very much, his pessimism. And um, right away I saw he was, he's not a man of faith, a man that grew up in a religious background, you know, but someone who has a tremendous love for his nation, for his people, for his, for his country. But um, the pessimism comes from when a person lacks the faith. And, that, and he, tried to, he tries to disengage from, from, from ideology, from all those things. you got to do what's good for the country. You know, that's his whole thing. But um, so I, I just sort of wrote a quick comment, you know, whoever posted this and all that, but um, expressing my feelings to that clip. And, and I think his major mistake he's making is that um, no nation in the world has ever come against Israel and succeeded for a long run. They can succeed in the short run, but no nation, the opposite, they have disappeared, those nations that came against us, and we have survived them all. And we will continue to survive them all. Now we have to have faith in our eternity, who we are as a people. But I want to mention his conclusion, what should we do, because he's coming against now the present government, what they're doing, and the cabinet, and his whole, his conception now is that we have to try to um, strengthen the army, which is, of course, always important. But he's, he's also get, he's actually expressing concern with what's going on with Iran and all the other um, nations around us that are really threatening us. And he, he wants us to strengthen the, the, the pact with the United States to make sure that they're the big brother who's going to take care of us. And, and, and here is a grave mistake as far as I'm concerned, and not that we don't appreciate our friendship with the U.S., of course we do, but we have to learn to be independent, and we have to learn that our major pact we have to make is with our cre the creator of the universe. And I want to connect this to the portion quickly and show you um, that this concept comes out of the portion, this idea which I'm trying to express comes out of the portion. If we look at the portion, one of the most painful um, things that take place in the in our Tanakh and the Bible stories, of course, is on a great happy event of the inauguration of the temple, where two of Aaron's four sons, Nadav and Aviu, offer um, the strange fires, it says in the, in the Torah, and, and, they, and they die, um, tragic death. And it's a beautiful explanation by the Rashbam. The Rashbam is Rashi's grandson. And he says something very interesting. He says that it wasn't a problem that they took the incense and they brought it inside to the um, golden altar, right? Um, in Mizmach Hazav. That wasn't the issue that they offered the incense. The issue was, and he stressed, which, which was very interesting, because we know that the incense was offered before the offering of the, of the limbs that were of the, of the sacrifices. And they went in, and they they were supposed to do the you know there's nothing wrong with the priests doing the toilet on the golden on the golden altar, um, but what the problem was was that they didn't wait to see what would happen regarding the fire, and the problem was they used the human you know the the human um, what was the word um, logic over here that they want to quickly offer the offer the incense so they they actually took what is a strange fire the fire that they weren't commanded to light. And, and the whole beauty of the, of the um, temple site here in the, the tabernacle was the miracle that the, the fire came down from heaven because what happened was the Torah describes how a fire came down and devoured the two sons of Aaron. And that same fire that devoured the two sons of Aaron actually also came to the altar, the, the outside altar, the copper altar, and ate up the, the limbs that were on the altar that were offered from the offerings that Aaron brought. So it was that same fire. Now what the mistake they, they did was is that they, the Rashba explains was that they diminished the Kiddush Hashem, the sanctification of Hashem, by 
using a human fire. In other words, in the temple is another, it's an extra territory. It's outside of any human territory we can imagine. It's a different realm. And in that realm, and here, the day of inauguration, um, they were supposed to wait and ask the elders. Ask your elders, ask Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses and Aaron what to do. And they went, the youngsters went ahead and they lit the fire themselves. And God says, you know, when Bikovayakadeshin, my close ones, I will sanctify myself. In other words, when people are working in this in the temple area at such a high level service of, of devotion, that's where it's literally you're playing with fire. You've got to be very, very careful, extremely meticulous and careful. And therefore they could have they should have waited to see. You know, was what the elders would say, that they sh- you shouldn't diminish the miracle of the fire coming from the heavens. So that same fire that came down to devour the limbs, they were, they were stricken with that fire. And that's really the explanation of the Rashba, which is a fascinating explanation. But I want to take this concept, and I want to connect to what I, w- what I opened up with, is that in reality, you know, when you're dealing with on an individual basis, as we all know in our lives, you know, this, we can't, when someone's ill, they go to a doctor. And when someone, you know, has to make a living and they go to work and they have to survive, we can't rely on miracles and we're not allowed to rely on miracles. And the very difficult, um, the very difficult way of navigation in this world is to know when we, can, we have to rely more on miracles because we're not really supposed to, right? But when, so when do we rely on miracles? When do, when do we, you know, in a situation that we rely on miracles, I'm saying, if, if um, we're not supposed to do that, right? We're supposed to... You know, do our personal effort as we can. And here we saw in this week's portion is the temple when you're talking about things that are very holy and, and great and a high level there, you have to really allow the miracle. It's a different realm. You have to let that miracle realm uh, rule because a, human, a regular inter- human intervention in certain situations there will just diminish the great light of a divine, of a divinity that comes down in the temple. Now that lesson is very important, of course. We're talking about the nation of Israel is a nation is a nation of, of holy priests, right? It's a nation that says, "Mamlechet um, um, the kingdom of priests, the holy and a holy nation, the Goy Kadosh. So, when it comes to regarding the nation of Israel, we're a nation that doesn't is not governed by the normal rules of the world, of just simple, you know, all the time relying on our own human logic and our own human um, efforts. But we have to realize. You know, on a, on maybe on a personal basis, yes, but on a national basis. When it comes to the nation, we have to realize it's not <laughs> our, our part that we're putting in in battle and getting ready. Of course, we have to do our basics. But we have to re- realize that the most important thing is when, we're, when we get cornered to a bad situation, just like we, in Egypt, we were cornered off by the sea. And the Egyptians, you know, were from becoming at us and the, and the sea was in front of us. We had nowhere to go. Um, that's really the sign of where the nation has to behave like it's inside the temple now and, and say, wait a second, we're getting cornered off and there's a lot of difficult situations. God is hinting to us that this is a different time frame. There's a different period and we have to rely on God more than anything in the world. And therefore, I'm answering to what Isaac Brick, Yitzhak Brick, this, um, this great general of Israel, that he had been man, I said, not of faith is that in certain situations, uh, Mr. Brick, you have to realize, General Brick, that we have to, of course, have faith in God, and that no nation will be able to wipe out our people. And we're in that situation right now. We can't rely on, on even nations that are friendly. Look what happens. At the end, they can turn their backs and decide not to help Israel. But we'll, God will never turn his back on his nation. God will not abandon his nation, as it says. We have to rely with our great faith on Hashem. So right now, of course, we're in tremendous, in a grave situation, because we have, it's like, it's like coming out of Egypt, and they're running after us in one direction, and the sea in the other way. We have Hezbollah, we have, we have Gaza, we have the Judean Samaria, the Arabs here, we have Iranians on the other side, and we have the Houthis, as we said, we have all these nations, and of course, Russia and China are behind the scenes. Don't think that they're not, they're supporting Iran as a pact and all that. And we have thousands of missiles pointed at Israel. Israel's in a, in a grave situation on the regular human logic world situation. Wow, Israel's in great danger. But if we look at the lesson of the temple and say, in this situation, we have to rely on Hashem that the fire will come down from the heaven, and that will, will be the great Kiddush Hashem in his sanctification, not not the power of my hands. We do, you know, we have to do what we can. We have to follow our, our, 
great sages and, and, and walk and let them walk in their path. But we will come out in flying colors because Am Yisrael Chai. We cannot forget that Am Yisrael Chai, and we will we will see great things coming very soon. It looks like, I mean, there's not much time, right? We see that really the situation is the most difficult period on one side that Israel has ever been in since the Holocaust. But on the other hand, after the Holocaust, a terrible tragedy, we saw great things taking place as a nation in the center of the state of Israel. We're about to enter another new stage of our history, and which will bring great light to the world. And we have to wait for that and prepare ourselves for it. And the answer is faith, faith, and faith, and more faith. Shabbat shalom b'sorot avot, yishuot v'nechamot.